Today, I want to continue my discussion on um, the video I made regarding my understanding of the end times. And today, I want to look at one other matter, and that is the matter of the fire that comes down from heaven. Um, in Revelation 20, we get uh, the um, words here that fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So the satanic rebellion um, was crushed by this fire that came down from heaven and devoured them. Now, we know that this um, rebellion is also uh, discussed in the Bible in Psalm 2. So let us read Psalm 2 to gain a bit more understanding about this rebellion and to see in this study if we can have a spiritual understanding of what is this fire that uh, um, comes down from heaven and devours the enemies of God because we want to make sure that we do not make ourselves an enemy of God and that we um, are, are on the right side. So it's important to understand it. Let us rather try and understand the spiritual meaning of fire that comes down from heaven um, because Jesus himself told us that the carnal fleshly understanding is not profitable to us, but rather that we compare spiritual with spiritual and that the Bible would um, declare itself. He said, Jesus did in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. And Paul explained that we need to compare spiritual matters with spiritual and to do that we need the Holy Spirit. If we don't, what happens is we set up doctrines of men and we get stuck in the letter and we are told the letter kills. So that's spiritual death. So in order to have true understanding, we need to look at the spiritual understanding and not that of our own, but that which we get from the Bible. Now, in order to understand this fire from heaven, it's going to require a long Bible study. Um, and the thing is, if you want to understand these things, then you need to be willing to invest the time to search out these matters. You firstly need to know the Bible very well yourself and already have your uh, relationship with the Lord so that you, you can actually receive some of the things that I have understood and that you can then add the things that you understand to gain more understanding um, because I'm not supposed to teach you. I'm just a fellow disciple who is sharing the things that I've seen with you, and that I do because the Lord um, puts in our heart to, to share with others freely what we have received and to help make disciples, and we are all to help each other and, as the Lord said, wash each other's feet. So this Bible study will not be short and um, you would probably not, um, it would probably not be for you if you, you know, or not, if, if the Holy Spirit, if you're not at a point where the Holy Spirit enables you to bear with long teachings and to search the scriptures. Um, but the problem is if, if you don't, there are so many false teachings out there to give you a quick answer and then that it leads to carnal understanding and false doctrine and deception. So it's really important to understand that um, we need to seek diligently 
The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit seeks diligently. And therefore, if we have the Holy Spirit, we will seek diligently for understanding um, of these matters. Now, the in the Bible, uh, fire has many different symbolisms. Um, we, we know that it says that our, our Lord is a consuming fire and that his word is fire in the mouth of his prophets. But we also know that there is false fire and that the beast of the earth makes fire come down from heaven in the sight of men. So we also read, uh, when we read the book of James, that the tongue can set the world on fire. So fire is connected to words and it can have a positive or a negative um application and I'd say generally the way I understand it is the word of the Lord is a fire but there is also false fire just like Jesus said um, be careful that the light in you is not darkness in other words there is a light that's actually darkness and that's in line with scripture that says Satan appears as an angel of light but there is no light in him um, so in the same way, fire can be um, the truth, which basically is the fire that um, can that can purify us. Uh, the Lord said, "By by gold tried in the fire." And Peter speaks of the the fiery trial of our faith. So, like the Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire, and Christ was with them. Um, likewise, we go through this process of being purified by the fire, which is the word of God, to devour all the wood, hay and stubble doctrines and lies that, are, that we have built our spiritual house with. Um, and the, the fire can destroy. And if the fire of the truth destroys, it can manifest on earth in the form of wars and things like that. So um, there is a spiritual fire and then it manifests on earth in the form of war, which is a, also a metaphor. War is a fire. Likewise, lies lead to delusion and can also lead to wars and fire literally um, on earth. So the matter of fire is, is quite complicated, but we are going to make a start to have a look uh, at the fire because we need to be able to discern what is the good fire and what is the false fire. Um, so that, that, that's really important in the day we live in. Psalm 2. The Messiah's triumph and kingdom, it says there. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. So Psalm 2 gives us a good idea 
um, of why there is this um, rebellion that we read of in Revelation 20, where everybody goes up and assembles against the city of God. You see, it speaks there of the satanic rebellion after the thousand years. Now, in my video, uh, which uh, the last one in which I spoke about how I understand the end times, I told you this is just how I understand it. Please don't take it as any doctrine. Remember, I'm a fellow disciple with you. I'm just studying the scriptures. Um, and there are many different doctrines and understandings of this. But to me, um, the understanding is that the kingdom uh, that the Lord brought is the, the, the age of Christianity. Um, even though we see that now there is a lot, there is so much leaven, the whole, the whole system is totally leavened and apostatized. Um, but in the beginning, there were many kings that ruled and they set up kingdoms which were ruled by the principles set out in the Bible. I'm not saying it was perfect, but I'm saying that that was what, how the Lord um, started to slowly but surely spread the knowledge of God across all the earth because remember the the um, statue in Daniel that is destroyed by the stone that that was not cut from human hands meaning the Messiah um, we read that that stone becomes a mountain that that basically covers the whole earth so that is the kingdom of God that that grew but we also know that in the end there is a rebellion after that so I'm not saying that the kingdom was exactly a thousand years though there is good reason to believe that it maybe was um, I'm not going to go into all that you can go and watch my video that I will link below um, that where I tell you a little bit more and then you yourself also can go do some research in the the um, detailed history of the church you see people sort of have this idea that the kingdom age must be perfect but it is not so even the the uh, Jews they say when the, the, the Messiah comes, um, he will basically, he will fight many wars, you see. So, but we know the Messiah is, is our Lord and his main way of, of fighting his battles is by the word of his mouth. In other words, by the gospel. But you see, the gospel brings division and then that causes not only in families, but also within communities, countries, etc. It causes wars on earth. So that's why Jesus said he didn't bring a, uh, a he brought a sword, and that his peace is not the world, peace of the world, because the process is still ongoing at this time. Um, but. Most of us feel we see that we are reaching the climax um, and that Satan has is being released from his prison um, and he is already deceiving the nations. It's been like that before our birth already, starting to deceive all the nations to gather together. So the nations to me, seem to be collectively called Gog and Magog, okay? And that they will, they are all gathering together to stand against the true faith. They actually stand against both the Christians and the Jews. So 
they standing against the truth and um, they they want to actually um, have a system which we already can see which is humanism and which is the doctrine of the United Nations where it's all about human rights where men rule themselves by all these human right laws and that has been ongoing since even the French Revolution all the philosophers and the um the humanistic philosophies and things that have been have been set up so it's like a long process and so these these nations are called Gog and Magog and I'm not going to go into my understanding of that now because otherwise things get too long so I'm going to try and just focus on this fire because as you all know in the book of Revelation there are so many things and we just need to patiently take our time and and investigate all of them and have joy in it we mustn't be terrified and scared and looking at the things of the earth our lord said to us when you see these things do not be terrified and look up because your redemption draws nigh so i want to comfort you having lived through my experience in south africa the thing does not happen as fast as they want you to to believe they want you to believe everything happens very very quickly because then you are paralyzed by fear and you are looking for the earthly manifestations so in the end you are actually looking at signs and wonders and that is how the um satan actually deceives by all these signs and lying wonders so let's look up and let's rather understand spiritually what is going on so that we are not deceived. That's what is important, not how exactly things are going to manifest on the earth. Those things are also sometimes things we can look at and that can gain give us understanding, but I have found to first have spiritual understanding and then look at the earthly manifestations is far more valuable. Um, just like Jesus said, that this, it's the spirit that gives life and understanding. And also when we are busy with these things, we have joy. Instead of being terrified and fearful and running here and there, trying to understand what is going to to happen psalm 2 why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us so we see there this um, in our day, we can see this. Remember, these words are the living word. They are always true. So it's not just in our day. Um, but we are to study these to, to help us in our day. So when I say uh, that this is in our day, the United Nations and the humaniz humanism, and all the human rights and, and the things that are happening. I'm not saying that's the only meaning this ever had. You see, um, it, ha it has meaning in every generation. But in our generation, we really can see a global type of a um, fulfillment of it. And... Um, it's not only in Christianity, but in the other faiths also that they believe it is the end of the age. I also know that the Lord um, doesn't do anything without telling his people and he would warn us and he would give us ample warning so we know what is happening so that we are not surprised and that he comes like a thief in the night. 
And so therefore, we need to be at peace and study and know that our Lord will prepare our hearts. Everybody that is seeking him, Daniel said the wise will understand. Now we, we are only wise because of his, his making us wise. Um, but because we are we have the righteousness of Christ, he will give us understanding through his Holy Spirit. So yeah, we see they want the, the nations want to they want to make a council together like the United Nations and then they want to have their own rules. They don't want to be under the rules of Jesus Christ and under the um the commandments we are given in the Bible, they want their own way. You see, because it's against the Lord and against Jesus, he's anointed. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, you shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. So we know that Jesus um, is the king of all the nations to the ends of the earth. So even this whole process of rebellion is going to lead to the situation that the kingdom of God is expanded on earth. And then, for example, where they have, um, the, in the Muslim nations, it's been very, very difficult to preach the gospel and to reach those people. This rebellion is actually going to Cause and is already through the internet causing that many Muslims are coming to faith and that the gospel is going out to the ends of the earth. So we must always remember firstly that the weapon of the Lord is his word that comes from his mouth. Now that may lead to earthly wars but we are not to have this idea of this lion-like raging Messiah that that has that just destroys nations. Remember, Jesus said, "I did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save it." So people have this idea of this Messiah that is when Jesus comes, he is like this lion, and he just he just destroys, um, but they don't know what they say, you see, because the Messiah we love is a lamb. Now, it's true that he will be a lion, but there are deep mysteries in understanding that, and we should, as his people, we should see his weapons as these spiritual weapons and see the spiritual war. There is an outworking on earth and in the earth. Um, and that is where we see the wars. But when our mind is looking like that, then our mind becomes, our hearts become cold. And we are not like his people who ha we, we have, we, we should have sorrow for the destruction of the ungodly. But yeah, we see that indeed there is this destruction. The people bring it upon themselves because of their rebellion. Now it says there, now therefore be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest ye be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are those who put their trust in him. So we know to trust him and not lean on human understanding, not lean on, on human rights, um, which 
are useless. It's it's not going to to save us. Um, the Lord uh, speaks at a certain point of relying on that staff of Egypt, which will pierce your hand, and and these human rights and these constitutions they really make me think of the staff of Egypt that pierces your hand. Now I'm being from South Africa. We were told that our country has the most advanced constitution ever and it had all these checks and balances and it was going to be this wonderful rainbow nation. And I can tell you that constitution meant nothing, nothing. Uh, South Africa just um, turned around and had a, another form of racism and oppression oppression and everything was destroyed so i know that the constitution where the people where it's not based on a people that fear god that means nothing and that's why they are fighting so against the constitution of america you see and to change that constitution because it was not based on human rights but you know it was made in a time when men feared God, but now they're fighting against that as well. So yeah, I highlighted this wrath that is the wrath of the Son. So in this psalm, the Lord, the Father, says that He set the Son over the nations to rule them and that they should rule justly. Um, but they don't want justice. You see, they want to do what they want to do. They, they want to serve their flesh and they only want mercy, no justice. So they, they call for human rights and, and equity as they call it. They don't call for justice. They call for equity, meaning they can sin as they wish but they see justice as, as unjust. So they only want the mercy and the rights. They do not want this justice, but that leads to destruction. Um, that's why it says perish in the way, in the broad way. Uh, it leads to, de to destruction and it leads to the destru destruction of God's people. And so we read about the wrath that is kindled of the Messiah. And that, I think, that kindling of the wrath is what brings down the fire that devours the rebellious. We are just going to focus on what this fire may be. We read the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Now, I'm not going to go into all that detail yet because I myself don't, I'm learning. So I don't perfectly understand yet. I, I have an idea, but I'm, I'm just going to look at actually the fire that comes down from heaven to focus on, on that. We see that the beast of the earth also makes fire come down from heaven. So not only does God make fire come down from heaven, but this beast, which is often associated with this false prophet, the one that looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon. So uh, it, it's a system that seems to... to be like Christ, but is not, and it has it has this fire, false fire, um, whereby it deceives by many signs, signs that it's granted to do. You see, so we've got yeah these two systems. We've got the beast from the sea, and then the beast from the earth. And if I compare it to the study I did in 1 Kings 13, which is, I have a study called um, Don't Eat With That Old Prophet. There we also have a 
two-part system. Uh, I will, in this study, I will go through all these things again, but now just to summarize, we've basically got a false altar, and then we've got this old prophet. So these, to me, are the two systems that I will discuss. And as you can see, this false altar and the old prophet very much reminds me of these two systems that we get. the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth. So the beast from the earth, this one looks like a lamb and speaks like a dragon. So I will show you that this system is like the false altar. And then we've got this old beast, the old one, the beast from the sea. He is like the lion, you see, like the lion that um, and the old prophet. So you've got these two systems that work together to deceive. That's what I'm seeing. So I made the video also that said the problem is in your kitchen, Christian. And there I said to you, there are two false religious systems on the earth. It's not just one antichrist. There are two and they hunt together, they work together. And we need to understand how that works. So that is why I am saying that this one uh, is this like the false altar and it has fire from heaven. It's got to do with fire. Whereas the first beast has got more to do with devouring, devouring. So there are two systems. Now, if we just generally think the beast from the sea obviously would, would uh, refer to all the old kingdoms that used to be. That's why it's got the seven heads. We, most of you that have studied prophecy will know it refers to all the old kingdoms, um, the Egyptian, the Syrian, Babylonian, Medio Persian, Greek, and Roman uh, beast, all those, all those heads. Um, and those are the old systems. And then we have a new one that arises, which I believe rises from after the kingdom age, which is one that looks Christian. It's a empire that is looks Christ-like, but is still a um, beastly empire. And that we can see from spoke like a dragon. So even though it seems Christian, it's it speaks like a dragon. So we had all the empires. Then we had Christianity, um, where all uh, kings and empires slowly but surely were put under the feet of Christ. And now in the modern times, which I don't mean the last 50 years, I, I mean many hundreds of years, especially we could see in from the um, 1700s and the 1800s when you have your revolution, your French Revolution, and you've got the rise of another empire, the British Empire. Um, so... That's the first time we have an empire that starts to again to devour the earth. But now we must remember also that the Lord uses these empires. So that's what makes it so difficult to see is we tend to think of everything as only evil and only good. And then that makes us not see the Lord's work. So... What I think this beast that comes up from the earth is the modern empires, the 
British Empire, uh, but it's more than just the British Empire. In Psalm 2, we definitely see this rebellion and that it will be stopped and that it has to do with, with wrath being kindled, which I think may be referring to this fire that devours them. And we want to know what that is so that we ourselves um, know that we, we are not going to be deceived and be devoured by this fire.